He is a good God, isn't he? Yes. Amen. Yes. Uh, we won't. We're going to jump right in because we got a little ways to go today. First John chapter five, verse four. First John chapter five, verse number four. Amen. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith father in the name of jesus thank you for this day and thank you for allowing us to be assembled together in this place god we thank you we thank you for your hand that is upon each and every one of our lives and for your love and kindness and your tender mercy and for your grace that protected us throughout this week you kept us from hurt and harm and danger lord and you gave us traveling grace even this morning to be here and we thank you for that i thank you father for each and every one under the sound of my voice i pray blessings encouragement and strength and peace to their lives god up those watching via youtube and facebook god we pray for them we pray that you would bless and encourage and strengthen them and we send your word to those who are facing sickness this morning dear lord your word says that with your stripes we are healed and lord we stand upon that and god we believe lord that even now lord that you're moving and that you're touching and that you're turning things around and god i thank you for blessing and, and moving in our lives make us who it is you want us to be forgive us of our shortcomings lord those things in us that are not like you god we pray that you will forgive us and help us to walk upright to be more like you and to be more of what you would have us to be Dear Lord, we pray that you would give us wisdom and guidance and direction and help us to follow the path that you have for us. We pray for Bishop and Pastor Helen and their absent this morning. We ask that you would bless and encourage and strengthen them and that your will be done in them and through them and for them. And Father, everything that you've intended for their lives, that you would bring it to fruition. Dear Lord, I thank you again for each and every one under the sound of my voice. I pray that you would touch them, touch them now, touch their, their eyes that they would see you and not me. Touch their ears that they'd hear you, not me. And Father, move me. You come forth in this place. I desire not your glory, but only that you be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. As you know, for the last couple of weeks, we've, we've talked about the eight keys to walking in victory. Uh, in the first two weeks, we covered uh, the first five. Uh, so today, if the Lord says the same, uh, we want to cover the final three. Uh, but before we proceed, we want to want to do a little review of what we've talked about so far. Uh, we said that as a child of God, that our lives are like watching a game. Or, or re-watching a game that our, our team won. As we watch the game, regardless to how intense it gets, regardless to how far we may find, uh, fall behind, we have confidence that our team ultimately wins because we've seen it before. As children of God, we should have that same confidence concerning our lives because w we serve him we have we should have the faith to know that 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 we win in the end for the bible tells us in jeremiah 29 and 11 for i know the plan uh, that i have for you said the lord i have plans to prosper you not to harm you i have plans to give you a future filled with hope we understand that that, 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 that time is the landing pad for what God has already done. This is why uh, in, in Matthew, uh, he, he told his disciples, when you pray, pray thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. See, it is already done in heaven. We're simply waiting on it to manifest in earth. And if you believe that, then you can walk in victory. Which 
brings us to our, our first key, which is to put your trust in God. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. So you see, failure to truly um, trust God will lead to losses. If we fail to trust him, then, then, then what, will, what will happen is, is we'll go and do our own thing. You remember I gave the example of a coach and players. When, co when players don't, don't fully trust their coach, there are many times they go and do their own thing and they won't stick to the plan. But when that happens, it leads to losses. The same holds true with us. If we don't stick to the plan, he said, I know the plan that I have for you. I have plans to prosper you and to bring you to a future filled with hope. He has a plan. But if we fail to follow the plan, his plan leads to victory. Our plan leads to losses. We got to fully trust him. Second key is to apply God's word. Or to know and apply God's word. Um, if you don't know what God has promised, then it's probably going to lead you to live beneath your means. Hosea 4 and 6 says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. You, you got, to, got to understand that, that, that our adversary is banking on us not knowing what God has promised. Because, see, if he, can, if he can keep us from, from knowing and understanding what it is God has intended for us, then what we think looks better. But when you know and you understand what it is God has in store for you, then, then you will follow his plan and you'll do what it is he wants, and, and, and then you can walk in victory. Please understand that, that everything that he can do to keep you from following the God, God's plan and knowing it, he'll do. And, and think about this. If, if, if the word of God was so important that Jesus used it to fend off the devil in the wilderness, then how much more important is it to us if we're going to defeat him? You've got to have it. So you got to know and you got to apply his word. The third key is to maintain the right perspective. Uh, we, we said that Webster's defined perspective as the power to see and think of things in their true relationship or comparison to each other. Uh, when we see Jesus in true comparison to our problems, then our problems shouldn't seem as big. Uh, we see, uh, or, or, or like Peter, we f uh, sometimes find ourselves on both ends of that spectrum. Though, um, in, in, in Matthew chapter 14, um, Jesus had just fed the multitude, and he sent them, told the disciples to go to the other side. Well, in their on their way there, um, they encounter a storm, and they see what they thought was a ghost, but it's Jesus. And Peter says, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come to thee on the water. Now, in the sta same storm that is raging, that had them scared, when Jesus says come, Peter climbs out of the boat and is, and is defying gravity and walking on water. And through the storm, the same storm that had them afraid already, but he's walking to Jesus because he sees Jesus in true perspective, in, in true comparison to the situation. However, in verse 30, it says that when he saw the winds boisterous, in other words, he changed his perspective. He started focusing on the situation rather than Jesus. And how many times have we focused on our situation? 
And what does that do? It causes us to sink. Just like him. Ladies and gentlemen, if we're going to walk in victory, then we must make sure that we see Jesus in true comparison to whatever is going on in our lives. The fourth key was to stay alert. The first part of 1 Peter 5 and 8 says, be sober, be vigilant. We said that to be vigilant is to be watchful. Uh, we, we cannot meander through life as if there's not uh, snares and, and, and traps being set for us. We do have an adversary. And everything that he can do to, 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 to ensnare us, to trip us up, he's going to try to do. And David Guzik wrote this. He said, Jesus found victory at the cross by succeeding in the struggle in, in Gethsemane. Peter, just like us, failed in later, uh, later temptation because he failed to watch and pray. The spiritual battle is often won or lost before the actual crisis comes. And let me show you what he's talking about. In Matthew chapter 26, verses 37 through 41, it says, And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceedingly exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a, a, a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and saith unto, unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. I can't help but to believe that had Peter chose to watch and pray rather than sleep, then in verses 69 through 74, when, when, when over and over again he denies even knowing Jesus, I believe things would have been different. Because he would have won that, he would have won that battle in prayer. But because he chose to sleep, when he was confronted with the crisis, he didn't have what it took to win. And the same thing happens to us. What, what it is is we'll get in a, in a nice place and we'll relax and act as if it's going to always be this way. But ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that storms are coming. We're going to be confronted with storms, for the Bible says that he sendeth the rain. Not, not it just comes. God himself, our heavenly father, sends some storms our way. Sendeth the storm upon the just and the unjust. But if we have failed to pray, if we fail to do what it is we're supposed to do when we're confronted with it, then like Peter, we won't succeed. Fifth one was know your adversary. The rest of 1 Peter 5 and 8 says, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Since the Bible um, clearly identified who our real adversary is, any time and energy we, we spend fighting anything else, namely each other, any time we spend fighting each other, it's wasted time and energy. We, and, and, ult and what we ultimately do, fall into his hands. He was like, okay. 
But see, since we know who he is, we, we, don't have to, we don't have to fall for his mess. And we also know what his plan is. For John 10 and 10 says, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, kill, and to destroy. And, and, and he intends to accomplish that by using the same tricks that he used on Adam and Eve and that he tried on Jesus. They worked on Adam and Eve in the garden. However, they didn't work on Jesus in the wilderness. And the trick is, is to make us believe that somehow we're less than what God says we are. You remember in the garden, the serpent comes and says to Eve, and I'm paraphrasing, and says, why, why come you don't eat from this tree? And, and Eve says, Eve says, well, God said that we're, we ain't supposed to eat or, or even touch it. For in the day that we do, we'll surely die. And Satan says, ah, no, man, you, you ain't going to really die. He said, God doesn't know that you will be like God's. God's little g. The lie is, she was already created in, in God, big G's, likeness and image. However, because she didn't recognize who she was, it became appealing to her. Mm -hmm. she, she didn't realize who she was. Because had she, had she realized who she was, then, then, then it wouldn't have worked. And see, it wasn't, it wasn't a matter of whether or not she knew the word. She knew the word because she quoted it. Matter of fact, added something to it. She just didn't believe who she was in God. And Adam... It wasn't that he didn't believe. He just chose not to live up to it. See, it's one thing not to really believe you are who you are. It's another thing to know who you are in God and just choose. I, I, I know who I am, but I, I, I just choose to do what I want to do right now. I wonder, is anybody in here ever? Other than me, I just, I, I, other than me, has anybody in here ever just chosen not to live up? <sighs> yeah. But see, it didn't work on Jesus. Because he tried the same trick on him in the wilderness. Because he's out in the wilderness the Bible says after he was baptized, there was a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And then he was led of the spirit into the wilderness. <laughs> you know, sometimes you're going to find yourself in some wilderness places. But let me encourage you. Every time you, every time you find yourself in the wilderness, doesn't mean you were lost. Sometimes you're led there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because so, some, sometimes we, 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 we find ourselves in those wilderness places and, and, and we will attribute it all to just the devil. But the Bible says that Jesus was led of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit. So if you find yourself in a wilderness place, yeah, yeah, don't, don't always attribute it to the devil. Say, say I'm not lost. I was led here. But it didn't work on Jesus. Because when he said, if you be the son of God, turn these stones into bread. And Jesus said, it is written. And Jesus believed what his father said. He believed him when he said, this is my beloved son. And he operated in what God said about him. And when we operate in what God says about us, then the enemy can't have his way in our lives. So, 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 if we're going to walk in victory, we got, we, we got to know our adversary and we got to know his tricks. Are you with me? 
So now let's get to these final three. The sixth one, the sixth key to walking in victory is to, is to equip yourself. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11 says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. It, it's vital that we take our relationship with Jesus seriously. So it can't just be about fire insurance. It can't just be about fire insurance. Because, see, there's a lot of folk who, who, who don't want to go to hell, but they don't want to fully commit to God. And, and, and that's where that, that, that um, it don't take all of that mentality comes from. Mm -hmm. that's, that's where it comes from. It don't, it don't take all of that. That's them folk who don't want to go to hell, but they don't want to be all in with God. They don't want to surrender all. The problem with that thinking, though, is that our adversary, the devil, is thinking whom he may devour, and those who cannot withstand the wiles of the devil. Well, guess who they are? Those who don't put on the whole armor. Mm -hmm. That's who the whom are. And that's who the, that's, those are the ones who, who, can't, who can't stand against the wiles. Because they're not armored against it. Think about this. Think about this. Um, how confident, wh which one would you feel more confident in? If you knew somebody was outside shooting, and you know you had to go out there, would you feel more confident in just a helmet or in an armored tank? Wh wh which one would you want to go out there? You want the armored tank? Well, well, check this out. Our adversary is constantly shooting fiery darts. Constantly. Every time, everywhere we go. And if you're not fully armored, guess what? There's an opening. There's a place for his attack to land. I can't get no help right now. Now we want we want to be willy nilly with it. Say so yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I want I want to know you just enough because I don't want to go to hell. But putting on this whole armor thing, that's ah. Oh. You asking for too much. You mean you want me to surrender? Oh, I'm supposed to give up that? Amen, lights. Amen, wall. Uh-huh. But if, we, if we're going to be able to stand, because the idea that things are going to get better, it's going to be easier. And, and, and don't think, he, he ain't just shooting at the place that he know you got covered. In other words, he, he's not going to hit you where he know you strong. Uh, Y'all heard me say before, you don't have to worry about me going to a crack house. I ain't smoking nobody's crack. <laughs> that sounds bad, doesn't it? <laughs> 
<laughs> Woo! What am I doing? <laughs> Something wrong with y'all. <laughs> I'm not doing that. If you see me, I, that ain't ever been my thing. I, you don't have to worry about me going. I, I'm not going nowhere to get drunk. Ain't, ain't ever been my thing. If I, so if you see me walking in the bar, don't ABC store, don't worry. I'm not going to buy anything for me or anybody else for that matter. I'm not. I'm not about to get drunk. I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm just not. Now, if you see me in the parking lot of a strip club, <laughs> stop me. Because it's going to get bad. <laughs> see, no, nah, see, see you, you know what the problem with most people are? They ain't honest enough to tell the truth. I can play with that. I can go do that. No, I, 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 no, mm -mm. nope. Shoot, I probably need to take another street away from it. I only want to see the building. No, you got to know you. You got to be armored against the thing. If you don't put on the whole armor, pow. You tell me, I don't know what happened. I know what happened. You weren't armored. You got to be fully equipped. If you're going to walk in victory, you got to be fully equipped. The seventh key. To walking in victory is you got to overcome fear. And notice I said overcome fear. Because fear has a way of coming upon us. However, in order to walk in victory, we must overcome it. Nelson Mandela said this. He said, I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. And the way we overcome fear um, is when it comes is, is that we, we, we must first remember what the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 it says for God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of sound mind, mind. So, so understand that that fear doesn't come from God Fear doesn't come from God, so we cannot allow it to control our lives. We can't keep it from coming to us, but we have to overcome it. We can't allow it to take root in our lives. And secondly, you got to remember that 1 John 4 and 4 says, Ye are, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Think about this. Think about this. The, the only reason a lion is able to eat a gazelle is that the gazelle forgets what is already in him. When the, when the lion roars, Fear comes about, takes control, and he forgets what God already put in him. A gazelle at top speed can run 60 miles an hour. A lion at top speed can run 50 for a very short ways. 60, 50. So the gazelle can obviously outrun, and the, and, the, and the gazelle can run at a sustained 40 miles per hour for a while. However, because of the roar, he forgets. And so he doesn't use what's in him. And how many times has the roar of the enemy 
made us forget the power of God that is in us. And we haven't used it. We haven't taken advantage of it. But I'm just saying to you that if we're going to walk in victory, if we're going to walk in victory, we must overcome fear. We cannot let it rule our lives. And finally, and key number eight, if we're going to walk in victory, then we must make um, praise a priority. We must make praise a priority. Have you ever noticed that when we're going through difficulties, uh, that if, if we're not careful, one of the first things that our problems affect is our praise. One of the first things that, that, that will 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 take the hit is our praise, not necessarily our faithfulness, because we can be going through and still show up. However, our praise get different, because when when we're going through, we'll 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 transition from the touchdown praise to the alligator praise. Oh, yeah, you, 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 alligator, that's them alligator arms, you know, because, you know, they got them itty bit. Mm -hmm. You can tell. You can tell. Shoot, somebody done got that, 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 that income tax check. <laughs> Bought another, a, a new car, and they all, what are they doing? What are they doing? Won't wait on nobody to, to tell him that he said he would. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, touchdown praise. Mess around and get about nine months in to them payments. Got folk from your office calling them. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> now we're here. Mm hmm. That's the trick. He's trying to. He's trying to get, keep you from praising God. You see, and the reason why the reason why Satan comes for your praise is because he knows that there's power in your praise. Ah, yeah, there's power in your praise. Psalms 22 verse 3 says, "But thou art holy, O that uh, that inhabitest the praise of Israel." The word "inhabits" means to occupy or to live in. To come and sit down. So, so, so when we praise, the presence of the Lord comes to where we are. Sits down and takes residence. Why is that important? Because Psalms tell us, tells us Psalms, uh, Psalm 1611 says that in thy presence is fullness of joy. Thy right hand, thy presence, presence evermore. See, when we when we praise Him and His presence comes, everything that we need is in His presence. As Paul and Silas, they were in prison in the inner prison. In a horrible situation. But they began to praise. And all of a sudden chains fell off. And doors came open. 
Why? Because they chose to praise him. How about, how about King Jehoshaphat? Second Chronicles chapter 20. The word came to King Jehoshaphat that the armies of the Moabites and, and, and a whole bunch of them ites, they, they was coming to get them. And, and so uh, Jehoshaphat began to pray and fast. And then the word of the Lord came and said, this, this, this battle is not yours. It's God's. And so, in verses 20 through 23, it says this. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that, that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army. And to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endure forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Am, Ammon and Moab stood against the inhabitants of Seir utterly to, dis, to, to slay and destroy them, and when they had made an end to the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy one another. In other words, Judah didn't have to fight. All they had to do was praise. And God caused an ambushment. He caused them to fight against each other. And kill, just because of their praise. So the reason why Satan comes for your praise first is because he knows that there's power in your praise. You by yourself, he can do what he wants to. But when you praise, you invite Jesus to come and take residence with you. And when you do that, then, then then just like, just like uh, the Bible says, no weapon that's formed against it can prosper. Fred Hammond said it won't work. I'm just telling you that if you will refuse to allow the enemy to steal your praise, then ladies and gentlemen, you can absolutely walk in victory. In closing, I'm sure there are some more keys, but these are the ones that God gave me. But I'm convinced that if we would take these and we apply them, if we will make it a priority, to put our trust in God, to know and apply his word, to maintain the right perspective, to stay alert, to know you're our adversary, and to equip ourselves to overcome fear and to make praise a, a, a priority, I'm convinced. I'm convinced that we can absolutely walk in victory. Amen? Amen. Um, last week, uh, Brother James asked me about um, the notes for this. 
and I didn't get a chance to do it this week, but I will. Um, I'm going to put together a sheet with, with my notes and these things on it for anybody who, who may want to have it and to refer back to it. And the reason why we've, we've taken our time with this because I believe that if we're going to walk in victory, if we will take these things and really apply them, and when we're confronted with things, refer back. Because I believe too, that too often we, we get a word, we hear a word, we enjoy a word, but then we forget a word. Thank you.